Right guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue on uh, developing our terrain in Substance Painter. Um, what I've done is I've just tweaked around with the um, with the color correct nodes on these layers here, just to give it a bit more of a greeny, greeny tinge. Um, but as you can see, we've really broken up that basic um, tiling pattern that we had from our initial um, Quixel asset, and then just layered them up um, to create something with a bit more visual interest. And what I've also done as well is I've just put them into a folder. So we're starting to condense all our different material groups into logical folders. And now we can use these groups to um, start masking away and revealing that uh, the dirt underneath. Um, in addition, what I've also done is in my display settings, I've just turned up the environment as, uh, opacity a little bit, just helps me get a sense of where, where I'm going uh, with the with the terrain and don't forget if you hold down sh uh, shift and right mouse click drag you can rotate that environment light to start sort of get a, a sense of the uh, the displacement all right so let's press on so the goal in, of this video is just again just to show you some different techniques in how we can blend away this grass to reveal the underlying uh, rock and dirt so we're going to add a black mask to our grasses layer so a uh, group sorry so we're working with the actual group now so i'm going to right click on that add a black mask to it and that will reveal all our underlying rock and then we'll just get a generator we're going to use a position generator first of all okay i'll just crank up that contrast so i can see what i'm working on and then just drop that mask down and then invert it so what we what we're looking for really is just to sort of um, capture the lowland the low-lying areas where sort of grass and things would would grow so this is going to be our base layer something like that and perhaps we'll just drop the contrast a little bit just to feather that edge out all right. And now the cool thing working in this this technique where we're masking things away, we can we can add additional masks on top and then use the blending modes to to combine the effect to get more complex maps. So we could blend in some noise, we could blend in some curvature information. Um, any of the generators that we have available to us, we we can use. And then using these blending modes here. We can, um, we can create some quite interesting effects. So let's give that a try now. So what I'm going to do is again on my mask, I'm gonna add another generator. And this time I'm gonna add a light generator, all right? Now what this is, is imagine shining a very bright light onto your, onto your geometry and wherever the light hits, it'll create that mask. Okay, so again, we've got some parameters to play with here and the effect is quite subtle at this point. But if we, if we play around with these settings, we can get something that's quite tight. Okay, and then alter the position of the light and you should be able to see how the angle that the light hits depends on what it reveals of the layer underneath. So we can get this sort of directional effect on our masking. And then playing with the levels as well, we can really start to see. So like at this area here, we can really start to see we've got this nice blending effect of exposed rock on one side and then sort of foliage on. And that's quite a common thing you'll see in, in, in landscapes and terrain that the area facing the sun obviously gets lots of um, lots of growth where areas that don't get as much sun perhaps will be sort of bare exposed rocks. So we can play around with that. And then in this layer stack here, we can combine these layers because currently at the moment, this light information is completely overriding our position mask. Uh, so if we just set this over to say multiply or add maybe, what about subtract? No. So just play around with these. Um, multiply should work. I don't know why it's not. So let's just try. positioning the light a bit differently and maybe try add again no and then I'm just going to tweak the I'm 
play around with these rotation values here to get something where I'm getting a nice mix between the two with some interesting shapes going on. Or maybe if I invert that. There we go. We get starting to get some interesting breakups in that grass layer there. move this around a little bit so we're getting something like that yeah so we're starting to get some interesting breakup patterns on our terrain uh, and we're starting to just let that grass through a little bit and then again for one final mask what I want to do is I want to subtract the very very sharp peaks from this grass layer so again we'll just add another generator but this time we're going to add a curvature generator okay and now you can see it's just letting through the very peaks of this so we can set this over to subtract and it's going to subtract away from what we've already got in our mask so you can see how this layer stack of uh, mask information is working for us here so we've gone from a very very flat looking grass layer we've added some information from a, a direction and then we've also subtracted away some curvature information as well and if that's too strong you know you can always sort of reduce the opacity of that again for sort of further breaking it up uh, to something like that and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this grass layer up a little bit further to maybe something like that if we look at it from a distance remember this is going to be sort of quite far away probably that position is a bit too high something like that <coughs> and yeah it's just a matter of playing around with all these different layer settings and getting something that works for you really so um yeah and it is a lot of fun um to to experiment mixing and blending all these layers together if we take up if we press c we can look at our channel information and here you can see our um diffuse map or our base color map uh, and as you can see already in just a couple of layers we're starting to get something that does resemble sort of aerial photography with all these interesting shapes sort of fractally shapes going on and this is you know this is just the tip of the iceberg obviously uh, I'd spend a lot more time doing this, I'd take more time experimenting with different Quixel assets, experimenting with different layer stack setups to really get something interesting uh, and obviously um, looking at my reference uh, at all times to, to sort of really get what the look that I'm going for. So let's just tone down this curvature a little bit because that's a little bit heavy. So we're only really just picking out those those peaks and just giving them a little bit of a little bit of a subtraction there from from that rocky layer cool cool one final thing I want to do um, in this video before we move back into Houdini and look at ways in which we can start bringing in uh, information from our height field is just another use of blending modes to really pick out the highlights on these sharp edges so what I'm going to do is I will drop down another fill layer okay and the only channel that we're interested in for this is the color so I'm going to deactivate all those maps and just set my color over to white temporarily all right and then I will use a black mask and some curvature And what I'm, what I'm looking to do here is just pick out the very, very sharp edges on those peaks, but only on this large sort of mount, mountainy hill bit, okay? So I'm gonna add that curvature map, but then I want to modulate this mask using another position generator. So I'll put down a generator again, but this time we're looking at position. And I'll again crank up the contrast so we can see what we're doing. So I want that curvature mask to only affect these sort of areas here. 
and I'll just drop that a little bit. So if I set this position now to multiply, you can see we're just starting to pick out those very, very top peaks of, uh, of those of those mountains and we can play around with that position to blend in more or less of that sort of peak shape so this would be good if you wanted to do sort of you know peaks that were sort of snow capped or something like that you could do that but what I'm going to do in this in this case is I just want to apply a little bit of a highlight to these regions so um, in my base color mode here rather than it being set to normal I'm going to set the blending mode to add so it's going to add this value onto whatever color is lying underneath and then just drop that opacity right down and then just start bringing it in just until we start to see that little highlight being picked up just again further breaking up those shapes and give us, giving us a little bit of uh, a little bit of definition so i'm going to play with that curvature position just maybe bring that down a little bit Cool. All right. So as I said, there you could take this uh, a lot further and do a lot more with it. But what I'd recommend, audition lots and lots of Quixel assets. Um, try lots of different layer blending styles and things like that. Uh, in the next couple of videos, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can use the masks that we've generated in Houdini and bring those into Substance Painter and use them as masks as well, which is another useful thing to do. Uh, so we'll do that in the next video, so thanks.